what the hell? Well, it's recording, Vince. <laughs> yeah, where's it's kind of pointing to in general? <laughs> <laughs> I just pretty much screwed it up, but anyway. Hell with it. <sighs> I'm gonna go for a cigarette. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my beer, but... All right, the camera. Okay. See the camera? Yep. We just situate ourselves here on this sofa. We're in in the camera view. Well, we're in full view of that camera. At this very so, point. So, uh... I don't know, what do you think about the... We're in full view of that camera, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, just making like, sure, just making sure. It's like camera okay. eye. It's like, um... We are able to go at the test. Don't be looking at this anyway, so let's just screw it. Yeah. All right. Good enough. Screw that. Let's screw it. Down and let's, uh, capture a conversation. Capture a conversation on camera, whatever. Just ignore it. That's right. That's exactly right. That's, that's, what, that's exactly what I'm trying to get at here. Okay. But uh, I had nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually. Um, <laughs> No, but uh, we had a lot of in-depth, you know, deep theoretical conversations, you know, um, tonight. And, uh, so I think we pretty much run the, the, the gamut. What do you think of the character of Spock on Star Trek? Pure logic. I'm not a big Star Trek fan. Well, just think of the character. I mean, you've character. seen a few episodes of Spock. What, in what respect? Do I think he is a good actor? Um, well, I like you know, the character is what the character is. I just well, what do you think of, the character is? You know, what do you think? It's just some kind of almost like a com computerized person type thing, where you have no emotion and you just more or less translate facts. But Spock well, is logical enough to know that in that in in certain instances there comes a moral choice. Computers can't necessarily make those moral choices yet. He Spock can't make is still a, a more elevated being than a computer. He just re represents like pure logic. Okay. The purely rational choice, without any subject, subjective or or subjective emotion going into the decision. You know, even if it means self-sacrifice for a more logical output. You know, of course that is a great price to pay even for Spock. Well, that's interesting. Computers have not had, they don't have the ability to make those moral choices that we do. But um, anyway, so what do you I'm, think No, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty too, man. I'm just got me thinking about it. How thirsty I am. <laughs> I don't know what it has to do with Spock, but I'm thirsty. <laughs> what can you say? He's an intriguing character. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, look, I'll just let you just kind of. No, take, no, no. You I just kind of like you, you turn. You turn this on. Go ahead. No, you you fill in while I'm gone. I'm just gonna get a glass of water real quick. Okay, you sit around here, right? Like here's the camera. You can see where it's pointing. I'll be right back. Well, you want to stay here? Look. Ahoy, crew members! I'll be right back. We'll get the. I'll get the water. You can get right ah, I see. Okay, I'm just kind of filling in time until the great. Karnak returns here. Ice water on here? The beer? <laughs> yeah, if, you, if there's any you in there. Beer. You want beer? No, Vince, I think I'm bearded out, man. Yeah. As, as will be evident by this recording. Hey, this is pretty wild, my guy. I gotta admit, I haven't put some in the bottle. Cool. <laughs> I didn't tell you to guess that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vince, you know, um, I couldn't see you not being a part of my chronology of uh, 1985. Yeah. What would you say about 90, 1985? Can you kind of diagnose the mood of the country? Or? I think the 80s are changing. I definitely think the mood of the 80s, of mid 80s, is, is really. Gentlemen, I think, we're growing out, I think we're growing out of uh, some of the self indulgent modes that were uh, evident the me in generation, the, the me generation, the me decade. Especially without a sense of moderation. I think we have all adopted a sense of moderation. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. <laughs> um, I had a friend who went yeah. to see Joan Rivers the other night. Said she was horrible. Really? Fogger ran across the stage. 
fuck this, you know. Well, man, what do you think about that? that? <laughs> 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 Bank yeah. sense. What did you expect from Joan Rivers? I didn't see. Yeah, it wasn't me. It was a friend. Was he a friend um, by that or what? I guess what you what she, the what she portrays on the uh, Tonight Show. I think he, is that what he wanted to see. I think that's what he expected. Well, that's what she is, but unless she adds a few more. No, he said it was a lot worse. It was a lot worse. He said a, a lot of it was, you know, you grow tired of that, of, of the same jokes. No, I've never been a real big Joan Rivers fan. In a way, I like her, but it's just got a line here and there. I think just the the housewife jokes, just you know, they just get to me after a while. And that, you know, I just bought this dress or whatever, you know. <laughs> Something about it. Yeah. About wearing bras and girls or whatever she talks about. I'm like, I know I'm making no sense. <laughs> <laughs> There's some good comedians out there, though. Always like Taxi. That was always a good show. Yeah, I I was never a big fan of Taxi until it started coming on reruns, and I like it. I like it. I like Louis. That's when I watch it. Louis Wow. Okay, he is a character. <laughs> Alex is, a, is an interesting character, too. Yeah, yeah, sure. He offers he offers great advice for everybody else, but he still <laughs> messed up himself. I yeah. think he surprises himself, but he really is a thinker. And yeah, I like Alex. I like uh, Latka. I don't like Lotka for some reason. Mm -hmm. Well, I always liked. Uh, well, I mean, what's his name? What's his name? Real Andy name. Kaufman. Yeah, I always liked Andy Kaufman. He's great. He was so bizarre, you know, the bit with no, the, the mud wrestling with, with women and, and that was great. He got something broken up. Well, I mean, by a, pro a professional wrestler or something. But I mean, that's even more funny. The fact that he cancer. carried it to that. <laughs> thing. Huh? he died of lung cancer. No. Well, that's nothing to do with his comedy, I don't think, is it? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was all part of it. Unless I'm missing something here. <laughs> <laughs> but, I guess you never know. Uh, anyway, damn, these weekends go by fast, don't they? They do, too fast. Hey, no, 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 I had a damn long one. <laughs> Being sick on. Eventually, I want to get yeah, into doing some actually written out scenes that uh, we can perform. Well, <laughs> like you know, actual dialogues. And you ever write something up, some kind of play or something you want to have performed? Anything you ever need to have, you know, to use it for something? I would, I would bring it recorded. I don't know if I'd ready to lend it, but I would, I would come over and record something for you if you want. Whatever. I remember my dinner with Andre. That was a great, great flick. Yes, it was. Flick. You know, I don't okay, even think Woody they have Allen it anymore. Woody Allen? Not lately. I haven't gotten any movies really lately because I've been going to school and, you know, it's been busy. I saw the latest Woody Allen number. It was uh, The Purple Rose of Cairo. How was that? <laughs> well, it was a little... Uh, it was pretty good. It was a, It's hard to describe. It was, it was Depression era. era. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, there was an unhappily married couple. He was laid off from work, and she worked as a waitress. And uh, she used to go to the movie theater, like to just to entertain herself. They had no children, and he would just like be crap shooting them, that kind of thing. And she went to the movie one day, and she saw this movie called The Purple Rose of Cairo. I'm not gonna make this a real long story, but no, but go ahead. She started. She it was like for a two week run or whatever. <coughs> and the movie. She went to see it every day. Yeah. <laughs> And at one point, one of the actors said, hey, from this from the screen, uh -huh. you've been in here every day. That sounds like Woody Allen right there. And mm -hmm. he jumped off the screen, and consequently the whole thing took off from there. But this guy was supposed to represent like the old hero type, you know, the true romantic. Uh -huh. Truth and justice for all, you know, didn't, didn't understand corruption, didn't have a mind for it. He was mm -hmm. like the super, you know, sort of like was in line with the... Uh, Indiana Jones type, you know. Yeah, right. But he was involved with this girl. At the end, it was really screwed up. It was just, it was a Woody Allen, you know, but. Yeah, yeah. How about you? You seen any movies recently? Mm, 
Well, can't can't think of the last really good movie I've seen. Um, what do you think? I, I uh, Rita and I saw Witness with the people she worked with, and uh, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> and Rita didn't like it quite as much as I did, but I, I liked it. What was it about? What Witness. Did yeah. Did you see that? Um, well, what happens is a um, an Amish lady and her son, for some reason or other, have reason to take a train, and they're in Philadelphia train station, and. Uh, the little kid is in the bathroom, and uh, one of the you know, urinals. The urinals stalls. are the actual st in the stall there. Yeah. And then uh, somebody somebody gets murdered right by the uh, sink. And he sees it. Gets his throat cut. Yeah, and he sees it. And um, and uh, after that happens, the, the killers want to make sure that there's nobody in there, and then there's this real tense, nervous scene where the little kid is hiding behind the toilet and then all of a sudden, you know, he, they're just about to catch him and he climbs on top of the toilet and they don't catch him. They don't, they don't, they don't see his legs? On no, the they didn't see his legs because he climbed on top of the toilet, I think, but... So anyway, then, um... What it turns, <laughs> yeah, what it's like, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But in, in short and sweet, uh, Harrison Ford is uh, a cop who's investigating and it turns out that one of the um, the, uh, the guys that killed him were in the police force and his boss was involved. So Harrison Ford was like kind of a Serpico type outlaw from, from the law. But looking, was, looking into the police department? Yeah, but being a policeman himself. Right. Okay. So he had to get away from there because they were the police, but yet they were the, the bad guys. So... This was the witness who jumped up on the toilet? Um... No, this was a little boy, okay, little boy. No, Harrison Ford was the investigator on the crime. Who was the witness in the toilet? The little Amish boy. Okay, now how's the story connected to him? Well, what happened was okay, that what happened um, to him after, after, the, uh, after the crime happened, the police came, and Harrison Ford was one of the police, and, um, and the, one of the cops said, oh, well, we have one witness, this Amish boy, so witnessed the thing. How'd they find that out? He, oh, he went Well, they must see yeah. So, yeah, okay. so anyway, it's a whole big deal about uh, Harrison Ford, um, they don't know who it is. The kid saw him and he sent the, the kid saw the thing happen but couldn't tell who it was, you know. You know, it gives the description of this guy. And so the way he found out was, well, they put a whole bunch of these like viewing lines, you know, where you can't see, they can't see you but you can see them. Went to these police viewing lines. Yeah. And uh, didn't get anywhere with that, and then all of a sudden they were like hanging around, waiting in the in the um, in the detective um, section where all the detectives are there doing their work, and he just happens to walk over and he's looking at this detective picture, police picture, and he sees the guy, and, and they have this dramatic scene where Harrison Ford just kind of sees the kid and, and knows what the kid's thinking, and they both know that. It has to do with the police department that killed the guy. And after the Harrison Ford knew, somehow the police knew that he knew, and he got himself shot before he, before he was able to get out of Pennsylvania. But the him, kid? Harrison Ford got himself shot. Did he die? But the kid and, and, and her, no. The kid and his mother had already gone back to Lancaster, to their Amish home. But Lancaster, um, but uh, what's that? Harrison Ford certainly couldn't stay around Philadelphia to protect himself. Did he, did so he did went he and hit out he with the line. Know that he knew? Oh, he went yeah. and hit out? He hit out with the Amish because the, the police knew about him and they tried to kill him. That's why he got shot. So he was hiding out with the Amish and he, he got into all their ways and all and he fell in love with the killing McKinnis. Well, the corruption must have been way down the line at that point. Or his people must have been, had to have been following the orders. I mean, that must... Who, yeah, was, who yeah. was running after him? I mean, it wasn't yeah. the blue cop. I mean, the... The man in blue was a uniform. I had to do with some kind of uh, some kind of you know swindling or misappropriation of funds or something like that, mm -hmm. and uh, he uncovered the whole thing. Made him well, they, was it Amish boy ever a target? Um, they no, not actually. But what happened was that he, um, Harrison Ford, went out and 
did out with the Amish and they, you know, brought him back to life and all this stuff. And uh, he, he got to the point where he was almost about to become one of the Amish or she was going to become a, a regular person. Oh, no! You know, because, because they fell in love, you know, and all this stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, okay. And, then, and here it is, the end of the movie, and, and the police force is trying to figure out where the hell Harrison Ford is at. Because, they, you know, they want to, they act like they're trying to help him, but they really want to kill him. So, um, you know, they got his line bug and all this stuff. And Harrison Ford is keeping in touch with his, like, detective friend in, in Philadelphia. So somehow, something so he fell in love. So we had an element of romance in this movie. Yes, we did. Yeah. But the main thing that really um, blew it for Harrison Ford, um, he was like almost accepted into the Amish community, and uh, the Amish were out in their their horse and buggies one day, and going into town, and uh, there's a bunch <laughs> of city punks who were making fun of the Amish. I don't know what they, I can't remember what they were doing. Somehow they're like, making fun of the Amish, you know. And here he is, a hard-nosed cop, and he just don't even feel like taking any of this shit. So these kids go on and they're, they're making funny Amish, I don't know what to do, and throwing things at them. Is, it, is this contemporary it's supposed to be like that? Yeah, yeah, that's the way it is up there. I mean, Amish are pretty, pretty much, you know, they don't have electricity and they don't right, have running right. water. They're very simple. People may make fun of them, but I don't. How, yeah, how, but anyway, how bad is it? but you're feeling you the do? same way I was. Harrison Ford is feeling. I'm getting all pissed that's, off. Okay, what does he do? So he goes up there and, and just like, you know, that's that's guy have it. Gives him a couple in the gut and a couple in the nose, and he's bleeding all over the place. And then this, and then but this. The guy's super assault. <laughs> well, this is how the Philadelphia police found out, because they heard about what happened, and they figured that's where he's at. And so then you have this big scene. I don't know if you can remember seeing the um, the um, the, no, connects, okay. the TV spots for it. But you see these three guys walking up a, a road in, in the early morning with three guns, and that's that's the scene in the movie. They they know where he's at and they're walking on down the road towards the Amish farm with three shotguns. And the rest of the stuff is about how Amish, how Harrison Ford. It was about killing each one of them. Each one of those cops. Yeah, and he. Is uh, it like intense? And then he does like it with the help. around the farm or something. Oh yeah, it's 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 great. That's like it was tense. The first one he kills because um he's hiding. They're um they're trying to get him and he's in a barn. He's in one of these Amish barns. Does he have any? Does he have any weapons? No, he didn't have any weapons at the start, and um he um the one cop had followed him to the um. The silo was attached to the to the barn, mm -hmm. and he crawled up inside the silo, and let the thing go. Let all the corn come down. The guy was inside the silo. He just got buried alive. That's how that guy got. Yeah, that's pretty gross. <laughs> that was that was one of the ones, and another guy just got. So he got. A, did he get a gun out of that? And then he went on to kill the other two. He killed. Yeah, that's things. how he well, eventually. What did he do at that point? He eventually, that was very nervous point in the movie. He killed one of the guys because he had to dig the gun out from the other guy. Oh, really? He was just about to get blown away when that happened. So that was another <laughs> thrilling point. But well, he blew the guy away. Yeah. But then, and that was, the they all got blown away. Yeah. The other one got. Uh, the other one didn't get killed. What happened with the other one was that uh, um, the last one, uh, the little Amish kid, rang this bell and it caused all the Amish people to the farm. It's kind of like some kind of warning signal that they give. So all the Amish come there and they're That's just so all scary. they're all standing they're all there, you know, and it's like um this guy's got this gun and he's about to kill Harrison Ford. It's like, you know, you you've lost, you know, drop the gun. Are you gonna kill everybody else? Are you gonna kill him? Are you gonna kill him? Are you gonna kill him? You are in a no win situation, you know, drop your gun. And that was it. Well what know. would they have done if he shot Harrison Ford? Well, I mean, he couldn't have killed all of them. Oh, in other words, he, they would have all been witnesses to the murder. Yeah, right. So, anyway, there goes the phone. Oh. Let me run to the bathroom. If you get involved in the conversation, uh -huh. Mike, don't bother to, um... Don't bother to, um... That's a good conversation. Yeah. <laughs>